Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, what a fantastic day it was in the markets. Uh, I was absolutely lucky today because I made a few trades the very first thing in the morning and I had a trade carry forward from yesterday and I think I'm going to rake in a lot of uh, profits tomorrow. So I'm absolutely happy. Today we are going to go through everything that happened in the market during the day. We are going to look at the CNBC headlines. Then we are going to look at the fear and greed index. Then we are going to look at the stock market heat map. And then we are going to look at the price charts for two watch lists. One is the genomic watch list first. And then we are going to do the AI watch list. And it's going to be spectacular. Let's get started. Well, friends, here we are. It's like happy days are back again. Uh, S&P 500 futures gain after Meta, Amazon results as job reports loom. And then we have Dow up 17, uh, S&P up 26, NASDAQ futures are up 0.91%. That's amazing. That's a very strong upside out there. And then if we look at the headlines, Meta shares jump 14% after profit triples and company announces first ever dividend. I believe it is 50 cents per share. And they have a $50 billion buyback. Guess what it's going to do to the share price? Amazing. I have Meta in my portfolio. And I also have the magical FNGU, which is a tactical instrument that you use when you're absolutely sure that the market is going up. And then you don't stay invested in it. Once you get your profit, you just sell and get the hell out of it because it can fall equally fast. So it's 3x leverage. So this is the time for the 3x leveraged. I was in at the right place at the right time, locking in profits tomorrow. That said, Apple shares fell after market, but I think it didn't come out too bad. Amazon was amazing, spectacular. And um, yeah, I think uh, overall uh, the markets are looking quite aggressive. And we are also got this Fed-related knee-jerk reaction in the rear, uh, rear view mirror. So it's receding. It's going further away. People are soon going to forget about that. And we are all now looking forward to the June rate cut. And any economic news that can be good will definitely help us do uh, even better. So that said, let us look at the fear and greed index, which should be at 70, which is really good. Again, nice spot to be in for a triple X product. The moment it goes into extreme greed, you have to bail out. That's my guideline. Uh, my personal opinion, not financial advice. Guys, be very careful for, with triple X leverage products. Uh, it can hurt really bad. Now let's look at the stock market hot, uh, heat map. And if we look at the heat map out here, we can see that all the mags, uh, I would say mag seven have got green in all of them, including Tesla for a change. It's plus point, point 0.84. Uh, overall, very nice uh, performance. And um, uh, Google also has been eking out a little bit. Um, uh, Apple was plus 1.33, but believe me, after hours, it has gone down to uh, by around 3 or 4%. Uh, I, again, I think it's a knee-jerk reaction. Apple is a good company. It's going to come back again. So when the price drops, my philosophy is to buy good companies when the price drops and sell it when the price goes up. That's all I do. And one of the things I have found personally is that you don't have to be buying and selling every day. You should be content not uh, just sitting on cash for good periods of time until the market drops, buy it again. When it goes high, then sell it and wait for the next drop. That's all you need to do. If you rinse and repeat that four times in a year, you make enough money. That's the way I am looking at it. Now, let's go on to our um, charts. Let's start with uh, NASDAQ futures. It's up a smart 0.90% and uh, it's looking great. We have a resistance out here, uh, which is at uh, 17,630. So there is plenty of room for it to go up. And it has broken past the nine day exponential moving average and converted that into a support. So that's a positive. It's right now negotiating out here to go above this line of resistance at 17.630. Tomorrow morning, if we open above 17.630, that becomes a support for us. And then our next resistance is going to stand at around 17,724.75. So it's all looking good, plenty of room on the RSI. Uh, let's go on to indicators and look at QQQ, which was up 1.18%. Post-market, it's up 0.93%. 
plenty of room in the RSI for it to go up. Everything looks good. Friends, this uh, chart has got candles which are all one day candle. And we are back into the bull channel uh, for uh, QQQ, which is a good news. And we have support from all the exponential moving averages uh, because the nine day exponential moving average is at 421.40. And we are right now at 421.88. So we managed to get up uh, above. Uh, thanks to the post-market action. So it's all looking good. Wix was down minus 0.47%, but still, it's above the uh, bull channel. I would like it to come below it, and then it will be even more placid. Uh, SPY is up 1.31%. Post-market, it's up 0.5%. All this indicates tomorrow is going to be an explosive day. Uh, Dow Jones was up 0.90%, still getting support from the 9-day exponential moving average up 0.02% post-market. US dollar index was down minus 0.43. When the interest rates uh, expectations go down, uh, US dollar index goes down, all moving in the right direction. Russell uh, uh, Industrial was 1.33% uh, up during the day, and post-market it's up 0.15, and US oil is up 0.58%, and put call ratio is starting to look neutral. Um, it's slightly bearish, but it's neutral. Uh, and then if you look at number of companies that are supporting the rally, it has increased from yesterday. Uh, these are S&P 500 companies above their 50-day average. The, it has gone up to 70% up from yesterday. And we go on next to look at our genomics uh, watch list. Uh, Intelia was up 6.05%, and it was pushed down the nine day exponential and the bear channel which is uh, at uh, somewhere around uh, 26.27 and we are at 25.28 and the momentum is pointed in the right direction but it has to go up above average but i will say that intelia is looking good right now invite was down 2.77 percent still uh, stuck below uh, 0.4163, which is a, a horizontal resistance. Momentum is very weak. Chart is weak. Bluebird was down 2.09%. And it is uh, teetottering around 30. I would say it's not looking great at this point of time. Bluebird is looking more and more speculative at this point of time. Prices are low. So one could probably uh, think of buying a bunch and you know, riding it out. But we have now fallen below $1. Uh, so that's uh, likely to attract attention from NASDAQ. And we have seen something similar happen to SQZ Biotech, which is not listed anymore. So we have to be careful. Uh, next, uh, Editas was uh, up 2.70%. Chart is still looking weak. Uh, and uh, DNA was up 4.96% during the day, but post-market it's down 0.79. Prime was up 5.67 during the day. Chart is still looking weak. Post-market, no trades. IMTX was down minus 0.09%, uh, being held back by the nine-day exponential moving average. Chart is looking pretty decent. Momentum is above average. Post-market, it has lost another 2.03%. CRISPR Therapeutics was up 2.73% during the day. Post-market, is it's up another 0.63%, and it's still above the bullish pennant. It's looking good out here. It's formed a doji, and it has got a resistance at 66.49. Then we have Caribou Biosciences, which was up 9.14 during the business hours. Post-market, there are no trades, and it has converted uh, the resistance at 6.27 into a support so this is a very, very strong upward move. Let me see if there is any news or it is just sentiments, just sentiments. Looking great on the chart right now. Chart is looking strong, almost overbought. Allogene was up 5.40%. And uh, during the trading day, post-market, there is no, uh, uh, no trades. Uh, ArcG was up 2.14% during the day. Chart is still looking weak. Uh, and post-market, it has done another 1.51%. Beam was up 8.32% during the day. Post-market, no trades. And in the process, we have converted the resistance at 25.10 into a support. And then we are looking at Verve, which was up 3.60% uh, during the trading day, no trades, post-market. Chart still looking weak, being held back by the nine-day exponential moving average. Illumina is up 1.91%. Uh, during the trading day, down minus 0.01% uh, after hours. And bio nanogenomics falling further into the abyss, 
down minus 3.39 percent no trades post market PSCB was up 3.84 percent during the day chart is still looking weak so when it comes to genomics it's purely market sentiment that is driving genomics when people get some extra money there's a positive uh, sentiment in the market and when the uh, yields start drop, uh, dropping uh, I think that's when uh, the money starts coming back into genomics and you will see that whatever is all green today there is a very good chance that uh, once the market sentiment dries out it will become red and then it follows a pattern of a couple of days of red one day of green and then back to red so there is money moving in and out so the entire genomics sector is high risk at this point of time so be careful and um, let's go on and look at the AI component of our portfolio this is a new segment so let's do that. Well, friends, now let us go on to our new watch list, which is called the uh, AI watch list. And um, I have a bunch of companies out here. If you guys think there are any really good AI companies out there that we need to follow, please put it in the comment. I'll check out those uh, companies. Also put a reason why you think that it should be in our watch list. I'll go and have a look at that. I'll suss it out and if I feel comfortable, I'll add them in here. And then we'll start doing our in-depth studies just the way that we were doing for genomics. We'll have in-depth features on each of these over a period of time. I'm going to start off with NVIDIA, which was up 2.44% today. RSI is absolutely overbought. This is a very solid, strong, strong stock, which is pushing the entire stock market up. And we have this red line of resistance here on the RSI. To me, instead of 70%, I'm looking at that as the resistance because that's where it'll go and then get pushed back down. The stock has got too much energy in it and it's kind of consolidating in the last four days. So it's preparing ground to move up further in my opinion. Let's look at Google, which was up 0.64% and post-market it was up another 0.34%. Uh, and uh, we have support from the 50-day exponential moving average, which is this green line out here. We were still within yesterday's trading range, but considering that we have had the earnings uh, and the huge drop after the earnings, I think there's a bit of consolidation taking place out here. Momentum needs to pick up, but it's moving in the right direction. Chart is looking weak, but I think that Google will be able to pull through because the cloud revenues were pretty good. And this is a time when many companies uh, have taken their money off the cloud side, I believe. So in this environment, if Google has done with the cloud uh, revenue, that means they are on a good wicket. That said, let us look at uh, AMD, which was up 1.66% uh, during the day. Post-market, it's up 2.14%. And... Uh, uh, it's being pushed down by the 9-day exponential moving average, which sits at 170.63. But friends, we closed at 170.48, but after hours, post-market, we have already blown way past that and we have converted that into a support. And right now we are at 174.15 uh, post-market. And the time is around 7.10 p.m. on 1st of February. Next, let's look at Microsoft, which was up 1.56% during the day, supported by the 9-day exponential moving average. RSA has plenty of room to go up, strong-looking chart, and uh, post-market, it's up another 0.73%. Amazing. Meta was up 1.19% during the trading hours. Post-trading, it's gone up 14.8%, my friends. That's a cool $58.42. On top of that, people who believed in Meta are going to get 50 cents per share dividend and that's a $50 billion buyback. So all of that is going to send this stock to the stratosphere. So I'm glad that I have it on the Canadian side. So I'm looking forward to huge growth. And also it's part of FNGU, which is what is going to put FNGU into a stratosphere tomorrow. And we have Amazon, which was up 2.43% uh, first thing in the, uh, during the day. And post-market, it's up another 6.87%, which is another $10.94. Absolutely wonderful performance by Amazon. It's not a pure play for AI, but it's something that cannot be ignored. So I have it here. ASML was up another 2.38%, and post-market, it's up another 0.23%. And one wonders, how much more can it go up? Because we are coming to the all-time highs. I think we are already at the all-time high. I'm going to just draw... Uh, line of resistance here and color it red so tomorrow we'll have to see what happens here because rsi is overbought we are at the resistance of all-time high we went to the peak the all-time high has been achieved or it's just a few cents away 
but then we have this huge resistance. So tomorrow, either we get a sideways movement for the RSI to cool off, or we just blow past this and go up and start meeting our cup and handle target, which, which we set up a long time ago at 9.49. So that said, Palantir was up 1.49%, and post-market it's up 2.45%, and it has got support uh, out here at 15.77. Chart is looking weak, but the momentum is rising. So I'm very optimistic that it's going to do very well tomorrow also. Uh, Intel Corporation was up 0.65. Post-market, it's down 1.59%. Uh, Baidu was down 0.31%, but post-market, it's up 0.97%. And uh, Intuit was uh, up 0.24%, and post-market, it's up 0.06%. Adobe was up 1.64% during the day. Post-market, it's up 0.33%. So friends, uh, that's what I see in the AI sector. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Oh, we forgot to do the FNGU. Give me one second. I'm going to add FNGU in here because I'm investing in it and I would rather like to see it on a daily basis and this will force me to have a look at it. Look at the gains on FNGU. Now, it has got this diagonal line of support of the previous uh, uh, bull channel which I'm going to convert into a resistance and we have another resistance up here uh, which happens to be at 277.47 and right now post market FNGU is at a huge drum roll 21.94 gain that is 8.35% gain post market it's at 284.77 this blue box out here shows where it is. This is the blue box that I'm talking about, 284.77. So it's met our cup and handle target, my friends. This is another successful prediction from ShareTrek. We took it to the bank. So it's worked out very well for us. So I'm going to be uh, aiming to sell FNGU somewhere around 277.47, maybe 275 or 276. That's my target for tomorrow. And right now I got 40 FNGU. I had 60 during the day. I sold 20 and booked profits. And I got 40 sitting with me. And first thing in the morning, I'm going to buy another 20 or 30 of uh, FNGU. Ride it all the way up to somewhere around 275 and then sell it. Because this product should not sit in the portfolio for too long. It should just be taken where you're absolutely sure that there is a bullish trend. That's my personal opinion, not financial advice, but that's what I am doing right now. So, as you can see, I'm very happy today, and I'm going to be happy tomorrow as well. I hope you guys are happy, and those of you who have got Meta, and those of you who have Amazon, you guys should be really, really happy, and if you happen to have FNG or any XXX leverage product, I mean, you are singing today. So with that, my friends, I would like to bring this video to an end. If you like this video, press a like out there, and please leave your comments. I need some traction on this segment that I'm doing. Let me know what I can do to make it much better for you guys so that more of you will watch this. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.